Hey everybody, I'm JC from One Shot Adventures and today I'm going to review another classic old school fantasy adventure, Harkwood, which was one of the very first, if not the first, standalone GURPS adventures. It was created way back when in 1988, and it was also notable for being one of the earliest fantasy RPG adventures to tackle the intrigue and conspiracy genre without a single dungeon crawl in sight. It appeared just a few years after The Assassin's Knot and The Veiled Society, two D&D adventures that also tried to do something similar with reasonable success. Harkwood is set at a glorious medieval tournament with hundreds of knights competing for the Baron's favor. However, this year, a villain is working in the shadows and plans to use this tourney as cover for his evil plot to take over the kingdom. And in a really interesting twist, this villainous mastermind is one that the GM can deeply customize, choosing between six different villains. Harkwood is rife with conspiracies, revenge, and politics. So if you like Game of Thrones-style intrigue, this adventure is going to be really interesting for you to check out. Now, even if you're not familiar with GURPS, no problem, keep watching. GURPS, especially back in the 1980s, was a really interesting game design experiment because it was designed as a sort of surrender to Dungeons & Dragons. The designer, Steve Jackson, wanted gamers to still be able to use all of their D&D material in GURPS, and so he designed the system to be very similar in some ways, like similar attributes, and everything in the game was described in kind of ordinary and real-world terms. So, in theory, you could buy an adventure like Harkwood and very easily port it to other game systems, or buy a Dungeons & Dragons adventure like The Veiled Society and very easily run it in GURPS. That was like a really cool design choice, especially back in the 1980s. But unlike Dungeons & Dragons, GURPS was designed to work in any genre, from fantasy to science fiction to cyberpunk, without having to learn a bunch of new rules. And so to support that, GURPS was a skill-based system not a level or class-based system, so players could create characters with really no restrictions except for a point total. And that's what attracted me to GURPS and why I still play it and enjoy it today, because I realized even back then that I could create something like a longsword-wielding wizard who was also really handy with lockpicks, like, right as soon as I begin the game. So all of this means that Harkwood, as an adventure, which is filled with conspiracy and intrigue, is designed without thinking about classes, and so it'll work with like almost any composition of players. But does Harkwood still hold up over 30 years after it was originally written? Well, grab your lance and listen for the festival horns, because not only are you going to find out, but I'm also going to give you GM some tips and tricks on how to run this one like a pro. But beware, not only are there evil masterminds at work here, there are spoilers everywhere. So if you're thinking about playing in this adventure, just turn right around and go enjoy the tournament. Harkwood was written by Aaron Alston and J. David George. Aaron Alston was one of the original legends in the RPG industry. He not only contributed to big games like Dungeons and & Dragons and Champions, but he was also known for writing some really good Star Wars novels. Harkwood is a 64-page book, but half that page count is devoted to a history and geography of the namesake town and its surrounding kingdom. This makes it a really handy supplement for game masters who want to run a continuing campaign here, because it's just chock full of like so many characters and locations and subplots for game masters to use. So that makes the adventure part of this book about 30 pages, which means it's probably going to take a few sessions to get through it especially since there's so many opportunities for investigation and role-playing in this, in this town that the whole thing is really going to move at your player's own pace. So don't run this one if you just want to run it in one session. Expect it to take a few sessions to get through it. Officially, Harkwood is set in the world of Earth, which is GURPS's default fantasy world. It's Earth with a Y. Earth is more medieval and realistic than worlds like the Forgotten Realms. It's kind of more like Game of Thrones in a way, maybe a little bit more magic than that. Earth set an entirely different planet, which was inhabited by elves and dwarves, but one day a splinter group of elves, the Dark Elves, 
decided to cast a spell called the Banestorm, which was going to just get rid of all of their enemies and the, the, the races and the people that they didn't like and just banish them to other planets. Well, the spell went horribly, and instead of sending all the non-elves elsewhere, it sucked populations from other planets in the same time period to Earth. So suddenly, you had all these medieval villages just uprooted from our Earth to Earth, and humans like suddenly did what they did best, and they conquered the whole like area, and they went to war, and they just brought all their technology and politics there with them. And now, hundreds of years later, Earth looks like an alternate universe with feudal kingdoms inspired by the original ones on Earth, but now fueled with magic. Good job, Dark Elves! How dare you make mockery of my Banestorm spell? Dark Elves don't make mistakes. Well, yes, it went slightly off the rails there at the end, but you'll see it's all part of our plan. <laughs> anyway, the historical realism of Earth comes through in this adventure. Harkwood is set in a low mana part of the world where magic is lower key and just harder to use. While this is good for a mystery adventure, like no spells to suddenly shortcut right to the ending of the adventure, it does limit the role of wizards a bit more than I like, but I'll get to some ways we can fix that later. The entire adventure is set in the barony of Harkwood, which is a rustic medieval area kind of on the edge of a great forest. It's ruled by Baron Fenmark, a distinguished and gentlemanly man who has ruled this barony for many, many years with fairness and competence. But his wife died 11 years ago, and his only heir is his 16-year-old daughter, Lady Alara. And since she's heir to this whole kingdom, suitors from all over are interested in marrying her. The adventure begins with the announcement of the Baron's annual tournament. This great affair where knights from all over come to showcase their talents, merchants sell their best goods, and everyone has a good time. However, this year, an evil villain is plotting to overthrow the Baron during this affair. In a really interesting twist, Harkwood lets Game Masters choose between six different masterminds to be behind the evil plot of this adventure. And they range from bloodthirsty maniacs to local lords who are jealous, to other people want revenge, or even the idea that Baron Fenmark himself is as mad as a hatter and is just like setting up his own downfall as a lesson for himself. I was going to ask why there are no dark elf masterminds in this adventure, but then it occurred to me that would be too cruel to the players because our revenge is unstoppable. Anyway, each mastermind has his own go-between, a sort of henchman that the players will start to identify early on. This customizability is a really cool feature of this adventure. I know some other adventures have done this, not a lot, like Dragon Heist recently did this in Dungeons and & Dragons, and while I haven't played that, I heard it kind of sort of got mixed reviews, but it works really well in Harkwood. Although I will warn you that because each villain is so different and they all have different henchmen and different reasons and motivations, it does make the entire adventure a little bit more difficult for the game master. Because you have to decide in advance like who the villain is and which one's going to work with your player's personalities, and then you got to sort of skip some parts that aren't about the villain that you picked. Anyway, I'll give you some suggestions at the end of this video on how to choose one that's right for your group. But be warned, the main feature of Harkwood probably makes this best for experienced game masters. The adventure kicks off with the PCs arriving in town, and they get caught up in a brawl at the local tavern. It's a little disappointing that the adventure starts in such a generic way, but at least there's a cool twist here, because the toughs that started the brawl are actually using it as cover to rob the innkeeper, who they quickly corner in the kitchen. So now the PCs like have a chance to save the day and earn a good reputation in town, because everybody loves this innkeeper. And this is how they'll be able to hobnob with the local lords and ladies and big personalities later on. So in fact, their actions here get them invited to the nearby glade the next day, where it turns out that Baron Fenmark himself is there, along with some local nobles. And this is the opportunity for the PCs to meet some of those characters, including the mastermind himself. Harkwood is set over several days, and so the next day, the mastermind strikes. At night, one of his spies secretly opens up the city's gates and lets bloodthirsty raiders into town to just create havoc and burn some stuff down. 
Eventually, the PCs and town guards will chase off the raiders, and the PCs have an opportunity to track them back to their base at a cave a few miles away. And this is where I'll point out that even in a simple encounter like this, Raider Strike, the adventure gives you motivations for every single possible mastermind, why they attack the town, and what they were trying to accomplish. Some of them just want to be cruel and like watch the world burn. Others are trying to deliberately target certain citizens in the town during the attack. Again, like that choice that you made at the beginning is going to matter with how the scenario of this raid plays out. The PCs will track the raiders to their cave, which if they're locals, they'll realize this cave has the reputation for being the home of giant spiders. Now, when the raiders occupied the cave, the spiders were like smart enough and they kept their distance from a big group of armed men. But now that the raiders left, the spider came out and killed the remaining people in the cave. So when the PCs show up, they'll find a few surviving raiders, like all webbed up and killed and a hungry giant spider waiting to pounce. By the way, when I run this adventure, I run this cave part as sort of like a mini horror movie encounter. I slow down and describe how the dark cave smells like blood and viscera and there's something, something else in the air. And then I have the PCs find the bodies, their faces frozen in horror. And then I just play up the tension and then the PCs who are probably wounded from that bandit fight will suddenly have their hands full and a spider just appears out of nowhere and like pounces on one of them. I just run this like a little Call of Cthulhu encounter for this part. <laughs> Unfortunately at the cave, the PCs will find no clues to why the raid happened. So they're gonna leave with more questions than answers. The following day marks the official start of the tournament, which will go through the weekend. There's a lot of options here for players to participate in the various tournament events like archery and jousting and duels. And honestly, I don't really know how to handle these sorts of events and adventures. Like for my groups, it always feels like one or two players is like really into these events and wants to participate in several of them and really care. And the other players just want to skip through them because their characters aren't that great at this sort of thing or because they're just extraneous to the plot and they know it. So how I handle this is I just give each player an opportunity to participate in one event or some other activity, but each one is guaranteed to involve one of the NPCs in the adventure to give your players more time with potential suspects and other people who might be involved in the mystery. So like if one player just is desperate to compete in the archery tournament, I'll make sure that he makes it to the finals in the tournament with the mastermind himself, or maybe his go-between. The next day, after the PCs have had a chance to just talk and role play more in the tournament, tragedy strikes. The Baron's daughter, Lady Alara, is missing and the Baron is frantic. An investigation leads the PCs to notice that this was a clear kidnapping because Lady Alara disappeared when she went into a soothsayer's tent and they find the tent slit and evidence that she was taken and then the witnesses around will describe how a goblin merchant who was selling rugs just disappeared right after the princess went into the soothsayer tent and he was carrying like a large rug and he piled it on a cart and he just ran the whole thing into the woods really fast. So it's obvious that she was kidnapped and that there's still time to save her. And so the Baron orders an immediate search and chase after this cart. And so a party forms up and the players, as well as some other key people and the mastermind join the Baron in rushing after Lady Alara to save her. Very soon into this chase, the mastermind will stop everybody and declare that he's figured out that the kidnappers are super clever and that they're moving quickly. And in fact, they've split up. Halt my friends, it looks like our kidnappers are very clever and they appear to have split up. And so we shall have to split up too. I'll go with the Baron this way and you guys go off that way and it'll be fine. Trust me, I'm very good at these sorts of plans. I'll see you later. Come on, your majesty. This speech causes the Baron to order that the rescue party splits up with the PCs going after the riders that split off from the cart and the Baron and his lords chasing after the cart itself. Now this is actually the mastermind's plan to split the party so they can kidnap the Baron. This might be one flaw in the adventure because if the PCs suspect that the Baron might be captured, they may just insist to stay with the Baron at all causes. This might lead to a little flaw in the adventure if the PCs suspect that the Baron 
is vulnerable to be kidnapping, they might just insist that they stay with him. So game masters may have to do a little bit of role playing or finagling just to make sure that the PCs and the Baron split up here because the Baron is going to get kidnapped. The chase after the riders takes the players through the Black Valley, this wooded area far from the kingdom that's supposedly haunted by ghosts. And soon as the PCs enter this like desolate area of the woods, they'll find bodies, not killed by spectral warriors or ghosts, but killed by spears and arrows. And then they'll see a few corpses of albino elves who are actually these ghosts. It turns out that this area is populated by an isolated race of albino elves that have lived alone here in this valley for centuries, separated from everybody else, and they kind of have their own customs and people just call them ghosts because they don't know what they are. So the albino elves appear and of course they challenge the PCs. They don't like outsiders. And so here we have an interesting role playing encounter with these elves not really speaking standard elvish and they're all paranoid about outsiders. So this is just a great opportunity for the PCs who like to just get up and talk and negotiate their way through a situation to, to shine here. Of course, I guess the players could just like pull out their weapons and scare off the elves, but I bet most players, you know, will want to talk first. Eventually, these elves will lead the players to another cave where the rest of the bandits have fled to. There's only a dozen or so left. The rest have been picked off by the elves. And these bandits are holed up in this cave with Lady Alara and with crossbows. This is sort of like one of those Old West stand-ups with the bandits inside the cave saying, you're never gonna take us alive! And the PCs outside trying to figure out how to get them out. And it's gonna require just great tactics or magic to find a good solution. In fact, I really recommend, if you're using like the regular GURPS magic rules, that you make this area where the elves live normal mana magic and so that the wizards of the group can feel really useful here in coming up with some magical solution to rescue Lady Alara. It'll just make your players feel great when they have magical powers. Once they rescue Alara, she shows them a note, the note that lured her into that soothsayer's tent where she got kidnapped. And again, this note will change depending on the mastermind. And so the PCs will know that somebody is certainly plotting against Lady Alara and the Baron here. This note will lead the players back to the go-between, that henchman of the main mastermind. They'll also discover here at the cave that the bandits were planning to hand off Lady Alara at a certain time and meeting place with somebody. And going there, maybe pretending like they're doing the handoff and that they're the surviving bandits, will reveal with certainty the identity of the go-between. And this will be a really important clue for the players to figure out who the mastermind is. But eventually, the PCs will head back to Harkwood, hopefully with Lady Alara to celebrate that she's been rescued. But now the situation has gotten dire because in the PC's absence, don't forget it took a couple days to find and track down Lady Alara, the Baron was kidnapped. Remember when the mastermind said, let's split the party. Well, that's what happens. And another local Lord associated with the mastermind has taken over the barony. And furthermore, the PCs are suspected of being conspirators and the guards have been ordered to arrest them if they ever approach the castle. So now the PCs have to kind of stealth around town and try to figure out what happened to the Baron and where he is. The conclusion of this adventure is set in the old dungeon, which is actually not a dungeon at all. It's a prison located in the basement of Baron Fenmark's castle. Now, the PCs might be in this dungeon because they got arrested. That seems to always happen to the groups that I run this adventure with, in which case they'll have to like break free of their prison cells first before attempting a rescue. Or they may have escaped arrest because they're good at stealthing around town and they've built a network of contacts. And then doing some snooping around, they'll discover and overhear that there's strange activity going on around the prison with like extra guards and just suspicious stuff. Either way, they're gonna to have to go to the old prison and rescue Baron Fenmark before the mastermind forces him to abdicate his kingdom and save the day. One change that I frequently make to this adventure is I make the prison a little bit more of an interesting set piece rather than just a dusty old dungeon in the bottom of a castle. I like to describe that this place was once built by dark elves centuries ago before they abandoned the area and they built it at weird angles and magic is still erratically functional here with like water mysteriously just everywhere and dripping from the ceiling and the walls and ice suddenly can appear on the floors 
it, like anywhere with the utterance of certain like special words. And so this was obviously the result of another failed Dark Elf spell, which just creates a more fun setting for this final encounter versus an ordinary prison. Are you dunking on my Dark Elf magic again? How dare you? That spell turned out mostly the way I wanted it. It really did. And besides, you'd better watch your tongue. Us Dark Elves always get revenge against those who speak ill of us. But in the end, with some cleverness and role-playing and probably some combat, the players are going to save Baron Fenmark, defeat the evil mastermind, and save the day. Okay, so what do I think about Harkwood? I actually think it's a brilliant gem of an adventure for anybody that likes intrigue and conspiracies and role-playing. While the adventure itself is fairly linear, it never feels that way in play. Due to all the plots of the bad guys, the variations, and the open-ended ways that players can tackle many of the adventure's challenges. I also love it that it gives all types of characters things to do. There's fighting for the warrior types, there's social opportunities all over the place, and stealth scenarios, and just nobody's going to be bored here. Unless your players just show up at the table because they want to kick down doors and kill bad guys, in which case Hartwood is not really for them. I only have a few criticisms of the adventure, really just two. First, the combat encounters in the adventure are kind of vanilla. Like, they're basically all with the same set of bandits or raiders, except for that one spider. So when I run the adventure, I just make sure to vary the bandits a little bit. Like, I give each group a very different leader with different weapons and maybe some special abilities or a spellcaster in the group just to make sure that the combats don't all feel very samey. Second, there are a lot of clues for the Game Master to deal with in this adventure, especially with all the NPCs that just hang around this tournament. It's hard to know, even reading the book, what's a critical clue and what's not. And while I doubt that players will ever get stuck, the worst that can happen is that they just get to the end and they're shocked at who the mastermind is. But this quirk of the adventure just adds some prep time for the GMs if they really want to run it well. It like really could have used a chart of all the character relationships like Warhammer Power Behind the Throne did. But it also is hard because it, you have to choose the villain and the mastermind, so I kind of get why they didn't do it. But maybe at least in today's day and age you can like print out the PDF and just black out all the clues that don't apply to your mastermind and kind of take some notes. You just really have to do that for this adventure for it to run well. And what about that mastermind? Which one do you pick? Unfortunately, the adventure just doesn't give you a lot of guidance. It's hard to know which one to pick for the best adventure for your group of players. Now, in full transparency, I have not run all six variations of Harkwood. But here's my advice. If your players are newer to investigation games, pick one of the villains whose motivation is just simple power or greed, like Morgris or Derek. If your players are good at these sort of like mystery adventures and investigation role-playing, go for Agrast, who's a character who's actually in disguise most of the time, he's younger than he appears, and his plots are generally a little bit harder to figure out than the others. Finally, if your players just love crazy twists and you are a good game master at role-playing, pick Baron Fenmark himself as the mastermind. This is the one where he's actually a madman. He's slowly going crazy and he's plotting against himself because he's got split personalities. Like this will make for a shocking ending. But you also need to be able to role play a slightly mad Baron along the way. Otherwise, this will just come across as random to the players when they get to the end. And I would totally skip the ending where Lady Alara herself is the mastermind. It's just too cliche and I just feel like it wouldn't go over well with modern audiences. So that's Harkwood. I think that this adventure still holds up really well, and it's a really unique example of a game that immerses players in a conspiracy. I also think that it fits so seamlessly with other fantasy worlds, like you could easily run this in the Warhammer's old world or in any of the D&D worlds without much effort. It just kind of plugs in anywhere you want. The only real issue is the multiple villains angle makes it complex to prepare and that the combat challenges are a little vanilla. But these are all easy to fix if you know about them and spend a little bit of extra time prepping. Best of all, you can buy this adventure online for like four bucks. 
If you enjoyed this old school review and you want to see more videos like it, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. It just helps more people see this kind of content. And if you've played or run in Harkwood, just let me know how it went in the comments below because I'd love to know how your group handled some of this adventure and its challenges, and also which mastermind you picked. Until next time, I'm JC. And just remember, if an ah. evil mastermind is- ah. <laughs> Revenge! Revenge is mine! <laughs> oh, that was so good! I mean, it wasn't magic, but oh, that guy was making fun of me all the time. I showed him. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Oh, man. Okay, I have to go cast another spell now. Thank you! Oh.